Now, to kickstart the first session of the day, I would like to call upon stage Ms. Ranju Alex, Area Vice President, South Asia, Marriott International. Ms. Alex has close to three decades of experience in this industry. Her values and commitment for excellent service and her empathy towards her associates has put her name among the top industry leaders. Interviewing Ms. Alex, we have Ms. Kanika Hasrat, Area Director, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and Uttarakhand, IHCL, and General Manager, Lake Taj Front Bhopal. She is a hospitality professional with, again, three decades of experience in driving operational excellence based on transforming, managing, and leading multifaceted teams. Are we on? Okay, I am. Is the mic on? <coughs> Thank you. So Ranju and I go back a long way. Uh, we started our careers a year apart, and here she is uh, in a new role. Congratulations, Ranju. Thank you. Area so much. Vice President, South Asia, big deal. Very Thank big. You. So at IHCL or at Taj, we say Tajness. Um, Mario talks about the secret sauce. What is Ranju Alex's secret sauce? The people I work with, they are clearly the secret sauce. Um, you, you cannot ever make a curry alone unless you have that secret sauce with you. And that's always been, um, as a leader, I've always tried to work with people uh, rather than above people. Uh, or below people for that matter, uh, always with people and I think that's always been my secret sauce and I would like to continue with that. I love people, um, the people I work with, the people you meet up with and uh, I would like to continue that. So obviously it come, there comes a time in everyone's career when you say that uh, this was the big break for me. What was that one inflection point when you realize that you're made for bigger things? So actually, it's, it's, it's uh, very personal by nature. And if, if I may share this with the audience here, it took me almost 25 years to even talk about it. Um, when I was 18, I, I was down with a very rare uh, neurological disorder wherein I had six tumors in my brain and six in the body. I still have three tumors in the brain for you know the team who works with me and, and wonders why I'm neurotic sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's the reason, probably. <clears throat> now. I was 18, um, I, was, I was just floating in life. I had absolutely no clarity what I wanted to do, what my goal was. Um, the doctors gave my parents uh, for me to live six months and they said you can, you can, you can start preparing for the worst. Her, her organs will shut down uh, one at a time and, and, and she will be no more. So the relatives started pouring in but, but my dad was somebody who would not give up. Uh, and uh, we, we then traveled to uh, the Velour Christian Medical College and Hospital, which those days was one of the best hospitals in the country. Um, I was in the hospital for two and a half years uh, through several surgeries, uh, through <coughs> intensive therapies. Um, I, I came out alive and kicking. Um, there, was, there was one moment I remember in a, one night where the doctors had given my parents <clears throat> 24 hours for my survival saying if she makes it for 24 hours after the surgery you have hopes to have her and I remember I was flitting in and out of consciousness that day and I heard the doctor speak to my parents till then I did not know I was that serious and I remember sending a silent prayer up to God saying please let me live karungi, and I will make something out of my life uh, when I survived, I think I was a different person. So if you talk <coughs> of a particular <coughs> sorry, incident or moment, it's not my professional life. Uh, assignments come, assignments go. I think it's you, yourself, your family, which is the most important part of your life. So I think that one moment where I wanted to do well in life was when God gave me another chance to live. So thank you. So Ranju, I've heard this earlier and it still gives 
me goosebumps. So thank God you're here, and thank God we have <laughs> you doing what you do. Thank God I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So if you look around the room, there are very few of the colors out there. Uh, an area of vice president is rare, area director is rare, there are very few lady general managers there. Was there, or is there, a glass ceiling, and did you break it? I always hear this term about breaking the glass ceiling, and, and I lo loved it. Anything that makes you look good or sound good is always good, but um, I wonder who's made these glass ceilings, right? Uh, I, people say, how do you feel you're leading South Asia and you are the first woman to do it? I don't feel any different from a man. Uh, I, never, I, I, I never take it as something that a gender could be related to. It's a job at, a, at the end of the day. It's a, it's a career, it's an assignment. Um, and and, and we, we are not lifting weights. Men are physically stronger than us. I think in a lot of ways, women are mentally stronger than men. But why the comparison? Why, why should we say, I have broken the glass ceiling? I think every general manager sitting here, every person I have known has broken a glass ceiling. Some glass ceiling may not be the career in, a, in your personal life. Everybody has broken a glass ceiling. And I think we should appreciate and celebrate every single person, not just women. Brilliant. Thank you. So uh, as that poll really sh showed us, COVID is behind us and fingers, toes crossed. Uh, we've seen the worst of it. All, I mean, every organization out there, every hospitality company really innovated, did things differently to stay afloat at that time. Uh, what was that one emergency strategy you put into place, which the residual strategy today still holds true? So I think uh, there were two or three that I would like to talk about, Kanika, if that's okay. First, I think, is manning efficiencies that we put into place. Um, and whilst it hurt us and, and it has dented, um, you know, our culture a little bit, uh, but we've, we've realized that you can bring about those manning efficiencies even in India. Um, I was traveling uh, two weeks back and I came across a hotel in Australia where uh, it's a 188 room hotel doing 82% occupancy being run by 48 people. And I wondered if we could ever, ever do that in India. And today, when you walk hotels, you see the same job being done by two, three people surrounding. And I know we support a lot of livelihoods, but I wonder if that could be done. I think that's an extreme because of the payroll cost in Australia. But I think manning efficiencies have been a huge learning for us. Um, the, second, the second learning is out of the box revenue or top line um, uh, you know, uh, streams. We never thought a married bon boy on wheels could get us the kind of revenue we did. We, 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 the, the only foray we had into that kind of a, a revenue stream was Diwali by Marriott, and, and we were gung-ho about it, but that opened a completely different stream. The third stream that's opened up, and I'm sure every hotelier in this room will agree to that, is this staycation bit. I think Indians have gotten used to staying in hotels, uh, giving them a break from their normal life as they have got used to ordering from outside. So I think these are things that will continue to stay with us irrespective of the, the pandemic being, uh, you know, being there or not. And I think that's, that's brilliant, right? Because it's opened our eyes to very, very different streams of revenues. And thank God for that. I think we're all in a better place. Uh, two years have been tough, but uh, I, we see all the optimism in the room. Um, again, talking about the pandemic. Three things. Uh, we are beyond it. We are above it. Uh, hopefully it's gone. But what are your priorities as the year unfolds going into 2023? Um, people, completely, I think all of us in this room agree that uh, today talent continues. Actually, talent was a crunch even earlier before the pandemic, and it continues to be a crunch. So I think the industry in general is, is bleeding because of a lack of talent. And, and I salute people like Dilip for, for this beautiful institute who, you know, we always crib that a lot of catering colleges in the country don't really um, prepare their students for the industry or do not select students who we think have longevity in the industry. So thanks to institutes like this, 
and and educational uh, you know hubs like this that i think it's it's a good prep ground for us in the industry but i think people will clearly uh, you know take precedence over over everything uh, the second is to build back all the um, NOPs, as we call it, in, in the Marriott world or EBITAs for our owners. Uh, they've lost a lot in, in two, two and a half years. If we've lost a part of our salary or some people, they have lost a lot of money. I think the second would be that. And the third would be to bring the confidence back in, in the public about both a career and investing in hotels. Um, that that is very very important and and as an industry we got to get together we have to celebrate our our successes so that it just gives a boost of confidence to the people who want to be a part of this industry irrespective on which side whether you're an owner or an associate I mean and an employee so I guess that talent was the top topic there and I guess with the ideal place I said way to go and uh, definitely uh, the support of this fraternity is required for those students out there. An insider question now. Ranju, uh, what is your pet peeve? Do this and Ranju is going to be wild. Uh, <clears throat> when, pe <clears throat> when people take their jobs lightly. Um, you know, our jobs feed our families. We all work for the money that we take home. We all work for a career. When people do not meet their own potential and are okay with it, um, that's my pet peeve. I think to not be able to do something, I'm good with that because th that's your level and that's what you, that maybe you're not meant for that, it's all right. But not to even give it a try to go there and, and yet be entitled, feel entitled for the job is something that just, just gets my goat. <laughs> I hope the married general managers are listening. So um, at Taj, we say she is the Taj. We um, glamorize women. We talk about poise, grace, intuition, her strength, whether it's a guest, whether it's our employees. Um, you work, you are a woman. You work with both men and women. Um, honest cross my heart answer. Uh, how many women in your leadership team? And how difficult is it to work with men versus women or vice versa <laughs> <laughs> okay okay that's that's a question for the first time that I've, I've encountered well in my um, immediate team you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised to know I have almost 40 percent women and every time I walk a hotel and I and I meet the XCOM LST I always tell the GMs you need more women in this team you need more women we still have a lot of hotels where the entire XCOM LST uh, are men um, I love working with men. I, I, I feel they get a lot on the table. Um, they, they get a lot of focus. They get a lot of analysis uh, on the table. The only thing that a woman gets more is the EQ, the emotional quotient, which, which um, I think it's, it's, it's all about the way we've been brought up, right? Uh, that has always, uh, you will always see the mothers in the household being portrayed emotional and uh, you know the one taking care of the family i think it's it's just a matter of time where we even cross that border the men cross that border but i must tell you i think i'm 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 very very um lucky to work with the men that i do uh, because because even when i work with them i don't really think of them as men as a gender and i as a woman as a gender um i i joke with some of my gms that i have I so think like, I think like a man that I would start hitting on women very soon. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think gender is the primary thing in my mind when I'm working with people or dealing with people. I think it's just work and the person that he or she is. So it, it really is not important to me. So I think you answered the question why, why Ranju got the job. It was not because Marriott wanted to show diversity in leadership. That hurts. <laughs> That, that, that really hurts. Uh, I want to ask all the men sitting here, how many of us have asked them that question? Did you get this job because of your gender? So when I look back at my career, uh, and in fact I did in a, in a flight a couple of weeks back, 
I've got 13 promotions in the 29 years that I've been in the industry. I refuse to believe that a company like the Oberoi Group and Marriott International being focused the way they are would give a person 13 promotions only based on the gender that I've been born with. I refuse to take that. And I would like to give myself credit that I worked for every bit of it. Thank you, Ranjit. So, woman to woman, yeah. it's not easy managing both aspects, work and home. Uh, managing both sides of the spectrum needs totally different skill sets sometimes, right? Yeah. And uh, when you are at work, are you a different person? So, there's a joke in my family. My husband says every time she dons the sari, um, in Hindi, Mata Char Jati hai. You know, I'm a different person. Uh, so at home, if you really see me, and some of you have interacted with me closely, my team, they know me as a mother. I'm very, very different. I have never uh, raised my hand on my kids. Um, I've never screamed at them. I, all that dirty job is there for my husband. Uh, but, but what makes me the person I'm at work is because I'm very focused. Um, and Kanika, I will agree, it's not been easy. I, there, there were days for almost 10 years that um, I would wake up at 5.30, go for my run, get my kids to school, go to work, come back at 9 in the evening. We used to do long hours once upon a time, as some of us still do, um, and, and, and do their homework. By the time I would hit the bed, I would not even remember my name. Um, and the, another joke that my husband does is that her, my, my nickname is gone in 60 seconds. By the time he puts off the lights, I'm fast asleep. But would I trade that for anything? No, I would not. I would, I would, I would live this life 100 times. I like being busy. I like being active. I like doing things. Yes, there are a lot of milestones, Kanika, that I have missed in the family. Um, the, the teachers in my kids' school never knew who I was. They only knew my husband. Um, and he would be amongst all the mothers discussing academics and things like that. He's been a huge support uh, and a great sport. And if it was not for that man in my life or my father in my life, um, I wouldn't have been. So when we talk of men versus women, I always say that I am where I am because of those men in my life. And I remember talking about this earlier to Ranju some weeks back. I think one of the things which women in the room, I think we always say it, marry right. The man is going to manage a lot of the jobs you would have traditionally been asked to do. Yeah. Uh, so I guess there's no better place you would rather be. You are already there. You are the epitome of success. You are the woman, uh, lots of women in the audience and so many back in our hotels aspire to be. So well done. Um, what gets you out of bed every day? What is that one thing that inspires you, drives you? So you know, there's one thing that uh, I've never done is to crib about my job and this industry. Um, there have been times I've wanted to quit, uh, wanted to do the typical packing the tiffin box uh, for my kids and dropping them to school and do all of that. But I always, I love being a hotelier. I think it's in my DNA, I was born for it. Um, so every time I come to work, every morning or I get up from bed, uh, it's the love of the job that I think uh, just just makes me work the way I do. I have never cribbed any aspect of her life. I crib the travel these days, though. Uh, but apart from that, I loved every part of my job. I love being a part of people's lives. I love them being a part of my life. And uh, just about it. Thank you, Ranju. And we also ran an audience poll uh, with the same question. So if you see that, 67% of us say, uh, what drives us, what drives this room every day is the career, everyone's looking aspirational, looking to grow, travel and incentives, 13%, sorry. It's buffering. So obviously, uh, Career is what everyone's looking at, and I think that's also uh, brilliant. I am very excited to actually see how many percentage put that point on power. Being in the hotel lobby, having so many people around me gives me that feeling of power. So that's what I'm excited to see. 
Uh, but that's all I have for Ranju. Any audience questions? Do you have a tech glitch? Yeah, no problem. It's not here. I can't see this one. 80% of career. Yeah. There is a percentage for power, but I can't see it. I'm sorry. 2%. So there is still someone who gets that high of being in the hotel lobby and having <laughs> get me my cup of chai. And I, I want it at 11 or 2 a.m., right? <laughs> so uh, wonderful. Thank you for being a patient audience. Any questions here for the woman in the hot seat? Sure. So uh, this whole men women thing, uh, interesting insights. Uh, but is this uh, how how you feel and how you live and what you've done? Do you see that reflected across other women leaders you know, meet or read about globally? Are the issues the same when you're juggling family, when you're meeting yes. Yes. Is it common or do you, is it something different for you? So the lip. Um, you know, I, what I see in institutes these days, in educational institutes, there are a good percentage of 40, 50% women. I think where we, even, even uh, from my college, there were 20% women during my time. Not one of them have stuck to the industry. I think where we lose them is when they reach middle management, where the, the pressures of the career is high, and at the same time, you're building a family. I think that's where the mojo is lost. And, and they lose those crucial seven, eight years, and then you have the youngsters taking their place, and that is where we lose the women. So I think it's very critical for us that the ones who have started out, if we share our stories of perseverance and resilience, I think they will probably continue to stay, and as companies then we need to work around their needs, right, rather than the other way around. That's the only way you can get them. It's very, very difficult to find, even, even today, women in, in top management. I was speaking to um, someone very senior in Accenture, and he said they have 48% women. And it's, it's, it's purely because they have a work from home option, their working hours are so much more controlled, um, and, and they have weekend offs, whereas in hotels we still struggle with that aspect of our job. I think it needs a complete uh, you know, uh, tuning of the industry, but, but you are so right, it's, it's, a, it's a common issue amongst women. And this is the question, Dilip, I'm asked most in, in panels like this. How did you balance? No man is ever asked this question. No man in any panel has been asked a question, how do you balance? Because traditionally in India, there are a lot of things at home that only a woman still does. I do. If you, if you, if you married li right, like Anika said, a lot of it is shared, it makes your life easier. I think one aspect that women need to do is to prioritize themselves and say, I want to do this in life, and try and get help. We don't do that. We, we, we say, no, my, my kids will not be raised by maid servants. My kids will not have a domestic help at home. My kids will not be raised by my in-laws. I did all of that. I did everything to ensure my kids were raised right. But I did not leave my job. I think women also need to, it's no point blaming the men for this. I think women are as much to blame for this situation than the men, right? So we have a question here. Oh my here. God, Mr. Keswani. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, any specific mandate to hire more women over men to balance the gender ratio? Good question. Yes, we, we do have our percentages, but we don't do so much for senior management because we know if you don't solve for the lower levels, there's no way you will get to. The only way you will get to senior management is poach from other companies, which is not always uh, the thing to do. So I think the, the, the solving for the problem is more the base category and how they persevere through the industry years uh, than actually the top. But yes, we are working through ratios because you know, it's, it's, very, it's very simple. What gets monitored gets done, right? So unless you don't monitor the percentages, you will never see an increase. Yes. 
they don't want you to ask me a difficult one, that's why. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, sir. It's a question, but I'll, I'll put a statement to it. We keep going backwards and forwards, uh, as Dilip mentioned, too much attrition, nobody wants to work in our industry, aside. Ladies, diversity, glass ceiling, uh, aside. The whole world talks about it, hospitality is no different. When I had uh, two occasions to, to question a panel and a family panel on what I'm going to ask you. Isn't it about time that we went beyond the men and women diversity issue and actually say, I'm not being very diverse, I'm not being very open to a large number of other segments that go beyond the men and women, but we don't. Um, there are a couple of companies who work with differently able people. Um, people say it overtly, covertly, somebody do it for marketing reasons. But nobody's doing it seriously. And, and, and if ladies are the empath, and now 40% in, in the senior management, I would actually urge all the ladies particularly because uh, you know, you've been through it, so you can therefore understand the second part of what I'm saying, right? And why don't you address that important community? In my previous company, and from learnings from part two, you know, about 8.5% of the world is differently abled. Eight and a half percent of the world, but there are no practices, and you need people. Put a big question mark on it. Add another eight, maybe ten percent, who are differently ab able in a different manner. And I just, I'm just leaving that category. Don't mean anything, which is the LD LGBTQ category. We do nothing openly for it, uh, but we skip, keep going backwards and forwards. That say men, women need people, can't get enough people. Huge percentage, 20% of the whole population is available for all of us in industry, nothing really happens. This is the comment I had put a little quiz at my, at my home when we were entertaining some friends, their wives and their kids, right? The kids were my kids' age. And I asked them this question, they were raving about what Lemontry used to do with the differently able. And I said, suppose I had transvestites, etc., serving you at the front desk, serving you at the table, serving you in housekeeping, how would you respond? I kid you not, eight out of 10 of the friends of my age category resisted it completely. So they would not accept it. Eight out of 10 of the gen gentlemen and ladies of my kids' age, in fact, 10 on 10, said we would want it. So the resistance, again, just with the male, female, you know, this thing that we've hung up so socially, I think sticks there, but you've got a vast majority of people or a vast percentage that we somehow don't look at and don't address, don't teach, don't bring in. Um, the world would be an oyster for hospitality if you did that seriously. We'll leave the thought with you. No, absolutely. Um, I, would like to, I would like to just add to that. I think every company Okay, I get it. <laughs> Every company talks diversity. I think Marriott has done it, right? And, and I'm probably the poster girl for it, but it's done it. And yet the questions I'm always asked are uh, about, about this, and it's a, it's a very relevant question, Kanika. Kanika has put it out, but everybody asks me that question. And that itself reflects uh, you know, the thought process of, of the industry even today, right? And and in Marriott, we have moved the step ahead. We have now done diversity in totality, like you spoke, um, and we're going all ahead with that. Um, and I think um, if not so much in India, if you really go to our corporate offices across the world, there's huge diversity. And I think that's what countries like India need today. So uh, point noted, we are working on it. And I, and I think every person in this room, if we put our head and heart to it, then yeah. Uh, then it'll be a great step. But, but I would still like to uh, you know, acknowledge that Marriott's done diversity uh, today. It's, 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 it's for all of you to see rather than just talk about it. Thank you, Ranju. And I think, um, good point, Mr. Keswani. 20% waiting to be brought into the fold. Thank you again Thank and you, uh, cheers.